What's up everybody, this is Dr. Ali Hader here. Thanks for stopping by the channel. Please smash that like button if you like what you see and definitely subscribe. So I've had a lot of questions lately from friends and family on what you should do if you think you have COVID-19 symptoms or if you were potentially exposed to somebody who did test positive for COVID-19. So I figure let's go over some tips on what you can do. Now the good news is 80% of the people who get infected with COVID-19 are gonna have mild symptoms. These are gonna be symptoms that you can ride out at home and are not gonna require hospitalization. 20% of the people who get infected are gonna require hospitalization and a small proportion of those are additionally gonna require ICU care and potentially ventilation and a higher level of care. Now again, it's true that most of the people who get really sick and die are older and people with other underlying disorders, but still important to remember that young people can still get very sick. Again, unlikely, but it definitely has been happening. Now let's quickly just review what the symptoms are. Now the symptoms of COVID-19 are really similar to any other viral infection or flu-like symptoms. Now 80% of the people who are presenting with COVID-19 are gonna have a fever. This can be a low-grade fever or potentially a higher fever, but that's probably the most common symptom. Second most common symptom is a cough. That cough can be productive of sputum or light sputum, or it could also be a dry cough. Other common symptoms include fatigue, body aches and malaise, okay? And sometimes GI symptoms such as nausea and diarrhea. By and far, those are probably the most common symptoms that we're gonna see, but you may have one, you may have all, and occasionally you may have none. One interesting symptom that people have described is a loss of taste or a loss of sense of smell, okay? You can see this in other viral infections and sometimes sinusitis-like infections. Um, there have been some cases of COVID-19 where that was the only symptom reported. So again, something to look out for. Remember, those symptoms don't necessarily mean you have COVID-19. It could be something else. It could even be allergies. But in the current state of play in the United States, I think it's important to rule out COVID-19 or assume COVID-19 until proven otherwise. So what do you do if you have symptoms? Well, let's kind of break it down into categories. Now, if you have really mild symptoms, mild meaning you have perhaps a low-grade fever, and you have a little bit of a cough and some body aches and sort of you feel like you may have the flu, what you wanna do is stay at home. The best thing to do is stay at home, take some Tylenol, take over-the-counter cold medications if appropriate, and try to isolate yourselves from your family. If you live with other family members, you wanna wear a mask at home, wash your hands aggressively, and try to ride it out. You do wanna get in touch with your doctor. It's never a bad idea and and depending on your situation, there may be a role for testing, even with mild symptoms, particularly if you're, for example, a healthcare worker. But by and large, mild symptoms, you're gonna stay at home and let it ride out. Most of the time, at least in the current status of things in the United States with testing, you're probably not gonna warrant testing if your symptoms are really mild. But assume you have it and treat yourself as such. Now, if you have moderate symptoms, so maybe you have a higher grade fever for several days, your cough is a little bit worse, and maybe even you have a little bit of trouble breathing, definitely in this situation, you wanna call your doctor. That may be a situation where you do wanna get testing done, again, depending on the situation of your area. What you don't wanna do is head straight for the emergency room or head straight for your doctor's office or an urgent care center. The reason is, number one, they're completely overwhelmed and crowded with a lot of COVID-19 positive patients. So if you don't have the infection, you're gonna expose yourself potentially to people who do, all right? Not to mention they're gonna be really long waits and things are in sort of a disarray here. So do not go anywhere without calling your physician if your symptoms are moderate. Now, if your symptoms are severe, meaning you've developed chest discomfort or shortness of breath and difficulty breathing, particularly if the breathing has gotten worse over a short period of time, such as over the course of 24 hours, that's a situation where you wanna call 911 and play it safe. Now, EMS is overwhelmed in a lot of places, particularly in New York City. I think they had 7,000 calls on Thursday alone, which was, I think, a record for them. So EMS is very inefficient right now, so you have to take that in mind. Another reason not to call if you only have mild or moderate symptoms, let the EMS handle the people who are a lot sicker, okay? So again, if you're not sure and you're not feeling completely crummy, call your doctor and try to get some guidance. Now, if you don't have a doctor, what you can also do is 
Call your insurance company. There's a lot of teledoc services and telehealth services where you can get a physician on the line or even video chat, and they can help you figure out whether or not you may need to go see a doctor or you may need to get tested. So use those resources. You can also go online from your um, local town and city and try to find out where there may be availability to speak to a physician on, on the phone because these services are popping up to let people stay home but still have access to a physician if they otherwise didn't have one. Now, if it's up to me, we would test everybody. Broad testing, kind of what South Korea did and what Singapore did. They tested people who were symptomatic and asymptomatic. That way they were able to isolate the patients who actually were COVID-19 positive, even the ones who didn't have symptoms. Because remember, there is a large chunk of people who have zero symptoms but could still spread the virus. Now, in the United States right now, we're still not up to par to be able to do that. Testing is still very limited. In certain areas, it's more widely available, okay? So what you want to do is definitely find out what the status of testing is in your town. You can go to your town's local website and get that information or even call the town hall and try to find out what the status of testing is, if drive-through testing is available. Now there's drive-through testing that's been popping around. All right, and these may be avenues for yourself to get tested if you have mild or moderate symptoms. Now remember, these drive-through centers are appointment only. So don't just show up somewhere. Make sure you call first and you can find that information online. It is important to note that even if you have mild or even moderate symptoms that's not going to require a hospitalization, testing is not necessarily going to change management. We don't have any approved medications for this, so it's just supportive care. The importance of testing is so you can more aggressively isolate yourself and potentially track back all the close encounters you've had to isolate those people. But it's not going to change your management unless you're hospitalized. The most important people to get tested are hospitalized patients and healthcare workers, so we can really pay attention to the sick people and the people who are taking care of these sick people. Now, what if you're exposed to somebody who turns out they were COVID-19 positive? So you're hanging out with some family or friends, which you probably shouldn't be doing anyway right now, um, but you find out that they tested positive for COVID-19. Now, it's also important to note that transmission is generally with close contact for prolonged periods of times. So if you walk by somebody on the street, chances are you're not going to get this virus. But if you were in the same room with somebody for an hour or two and potentially touched the same surfaces and had some close contact, that may be a situation where your risk is a little bit higher. So if you had close contact with somebody who was COVID-19 positive, what you want to do is firstly, quarantine yourself at home, okay? Self-isolate, wear a mask if you're living with other people, and monitor for symptoms, okay? We generally recommend a 14-day quarantine, and that's because of the incubation period of the virus. The incubation period is the time it takes from acquiring exposure to the virus to the point where you're gonna develop symptoms. And generally, we think the average is about five days, but it can be anywhere between two days all the way to 14 days. Still, in many places, testing is still limited to um, people admitted to the hospital who are really sick and healthcare per professionals who are having symptoms. So again, hopefully everybody is socially isolating. Remember, although the majority of people who get this virus are not going to be super sick, there is a percentage of people who are going to require hospitalization and a percentage of people who are going to get very sick. And although predominantly that's older and people with comorbidities, there are a handful of young, healthy people getting very sick. So we all have to take it seriously. Thank <music> you.